Jackson two bracket. Joe takes down the first game over Tenjum. Kind of what you would expect. Right. Yeah, as I said, I believe that uh, Tron is favored. You can gain as much life as you want. I'm just going to Ulamog and I'm going to Karn you. And one of the biggest differences, again, you see 20 minutes, 21 minutes remaining in the round for the two players. The closing speed of Tron seems like the biggest casualty of the Eye of Ugin banning. Yeah, you're not able to just take a turn off to go tutor for something. They used to play Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn as well, uh, back when Ayavu was legal. Not yeah. necessarily towards the end of things. Well, I think Ulamog became the replacement for Emrakul. Right, but even just being able to tutor for Ulamogs and alternating turns, that'll close the game very fast as well. Right, game one. When Tron, tr a 25-minute win for Tron used to be a very rare thing. We're underway, though. Game number two, Andrew Tenjum starts off on Verdant Catacombs. He'll go ahead and get Temple Garden into play untapped, go to 17, cast Noble Hierarch, and go back to Joe. For Lisette, it is Urza's Power Plant, Expedition Map, and a pass back to Tenjum. Joe's threatening that turn three Tron. Right, so if he plays a second Tron land here, then the map will find the third one? Correct. He also looks like he has some, some red card in his sideboard, some sort of sweeper. No Clasm's main or board. So those fire spots instead. We'll see the hand. It's Thought Seas for Andrew Tenjum. That's out of the sideboard. And we'll look at Joe's hand. It appears to be a Grove of the Burn Willows, a Karn Liberated, an Ugin the Spirit Dragon, a Relic of Progenitus, a Chromatic Sphere, and an Oblivion Stone. Three Haymakers here with Karn, Stone, and Ugin. But no more Tron pieces just yet. Right, uh, the Grove would be the second land, assuming nothing comes off the top, so the map could only find up to the, to the second Tron piece. So Joe's a ways away from casting and activating Oblivion Stone or casting Karn or Ulamog, or Ugin, rather. Andrew takes Relic of Progenitus. Okay, if he's not taking any of the Haymakers, what does that mean? So the concession is one of these Haymakers is going to get me if the game gets to that point. Right. The Relic of Regenitus turns off the combos for Tenjum. It makes him able to exile the Persist creatures while they're in the graveyard. OK, so he can't stop the combo. Now Joe will play the Grove with the Burn Willows. If he assembles Tron, he does have that Ugin, right? And right. That's, that wins games against Dobbs on Company. It would exile all the creatures. Uh, no worries about Persist creatures if that's the way that we're cleaning them up as well. And then the Ugin just starts ticking up and threatens to do it all over again. So Joe on his turn plays Grove of the Burn Willows, sacrifices the map to find Urza's Mine. That's Tron piece number two. We go back to Tenjum's third turn. He'll find an overgrown tomb. He's down to 12. That's probably just fine where he's standing. Right. Joe is not just going to kill Tenjum. There's really no angle for him to get into combat in this matchup. Ugin definitely does three damage when you use its plus ability, but that's not the plan here. It will be Eternal Witness from Tenjum for another Thought Season. He'll fire it off a second time. So we see Joe's hand. His draw was Fire Spout. So we see the mine and now Fire Spout from Joe. Now, if we're committed to not taking any of these sweepers, I assume the Fire Spout is the pick here. And Tenjum very quickly takes the three mana sweeper. He's challenging Joe to find Tron. Joe doesn't have it. He drew a second copy of Urza's Mine. Yep, and uh, taking the Fire Spout leaves that Noble Hierarch in play from Tenjum. Keeps him at four mana sources. So what do you think about this guessing game? Joe cracked his Expedition map, got a mine, and then drew a mine. It's not ideal, but he's just leaving mana off the table if he doesn't activate it. He's lining himself up to play the Karn as soon as possible, and sometimes you get punished. Big draw here for Joe. He plays Chromatic Sphere, sacrifices it for a green mana, and draws Sylvan Scrying off the draw step, plays it, and that's going to find Urza's Tower. He will have eight mana next turn with an Ugin in hand. Yeah, now Tenjum really wants a, a second Eternal Witness so we can Thought Seize again. <laughs> Here's a Viscera Seer from Tenjum. He attacks for three with, with Eternal Witness, plays a Verdant Catacombs, and says go. All right, Joe can do his worst. Here's Urza's tower. Eight mana available for Lisette. Tenjum has left up enough mana for a possible collected company. Right. I don't believe that that's going to stop Joe from making the Ugin play. He's certainly thinking about it. Well, he has O-Stone as well. Right? Yeah. They're both eight mana sweepers. Yeah, you can leave on O-Stone, and then the Ugin will be at a higher loyalty as the game progresses. Is there a reason to do one versus the other? Yeah, he'll play Oblivion Stone. Yeah, given the fact that if we go and minus the Ugin on this turn, if Tenjum has that collective company, we probably just lose it. 
And we don't have to do that if we just commit O-Stone here. Yes, he plays O-Stone, leaves up five mana. Now Tenjim will un not play anything, untap, deal three with the Eternal Witness, play Razor Verge Thicket, and just pass the turn over to Lisette. And now there's this interesting dynamic, right? No one wants to pull the trigger on Oblivion Stone. I guess Joe just will. <laughs> it's If he didn't, it, it would take a lot of, I think, work. Right. Tenjim fetching in response because he's planning to sacrifice these creatures, the Viscera Seer. You want oh, okay. to shuffle your library before you start scrying. Keep that order in check. There's a lot of haymakers Tenjim has to face down. He knows Lissette's hand is Karn and Ugin. So I was talking about Tenjim's life total not really mattering. Now Tenjim doesn't have mana to leave up Collected Company, and he's at lethal with three activations of Ugin the Spirit Dragon at his face. It's worth noting that there's mana floating here from Tenjim. He scries three times, and now we go back to Joe's side. Plays Urza's Mine, now has 10 mana available. Here's nine of it. Looks like Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Yeah, plus three Tenjim to six. Yep. The other ability is not applicable here, and now two, two turns and Tenjim's just dead to this Planeswalker. And what a good play with that ninth mana Joe casts Relic of Progenitus, getting to leave one up. He now has Tenjim's Graveyard under control. Yep, there's no way for that life combo out of Tenjim while that Relic is still up with that one mana available. All right, back on Andrew's side, he'll tap four for Murderous Red Cap. That will deal two damage just to Joe. Joe's at 11. So Tenjim probably wants Joe to use this Ugin just to exile the red cap. I imagine we'll see Joe doing that with Karn, though. Yeah, here is Karn liberated. This other, the other colorless planeswalker. The whole team is here. And once he exiles the red cap, Andrew Tenjim's infinite damage combo is gone from the deck. Right. There's no way. You can't eternal witness back from exile. There's no wishes. There's no glittering wish in this Abzan company deck. And they changed that rule anyway. So red cap exiled. Ugin, three damage to Tenjim. Tenjim's at three. Ugin will be lethal next turn. It's at 11 loyalty. This is a, this looks like it's going to be the match for Lissette. Yep, still has that relic up. You know, Tenjim could cast a Kitchen Finks, go up to five. That buys him a turn, but that will not win him the match. Last draw for Tenjim. Can he find an out? He's at three. He has Lissette at 11. He'd have to get a lot of damage across, and more importantly, he'd have to gain life or take care of Ugin. He'll pass the turn. Joe will tap the Relic to exile one card. We go back to Lissette. Ugin is lethal. So it takes a second. You know, what are you up to? I'm probably just going to plus this Ugin, but what do you got? How can I lose this game? Yeah, start by plusing the Ugin. See if Andrew has anything. I think he's wondering, can he be playing around something? Collected company? Well, the thing is, without plusing the Ugin, he can't force the issue whatsoever. So I right. imagine that's where we start. Plus a Zugin. Three damage. Okay, Collected Company response for Tenjim. All right. Let's see what we got. Kitchen Finks and Noble Hierarch. Andrew will gain two. Go to five. Now okay. down to two. So we're not dead. We're not dead, but there's still the relic. Good. There's still the relic. We still right. can't combo. There's a, there's a lot that we have to fix here. So if there wasn't the relic, then Joe would have to worry that Andrew might assemble the infinite life combo? Correct. Uh, we would see him aggressively Karn away that Kitchen Finks if that were the case. More likely we see Karn just take that last card in Tenjim's hand given this board state. Chromatic Star will draw Joe a card. Draws him another Karn, and he has the mana to play it? Oh my. Okay, so may as well start with exiling the Kitchen <laughs> yeah, Finks, that being the Kitchen case. Kitchen Finks. That's what Joe will do. Play another Karn. He does have a mana floating off that Chromatic Star. That's why you see him casting only, tapping only six mana worth of cards. Karn will plus. Now it goes for Andrew's hand. Andrew draws a card. And that is game and match. 2-0. Joe Lissette, Green Red Tron, coming off a loss, picks up a win, moves to 10-2. and 10-2 and two with the dreaded Tron. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, boy. Rumors of Tron's demise have been greatly exaggerated. This mm. deck is still real. And Obzon Company being considered by many the best deck, probably the most popular deck in the tournament, or at least one of them. It looks like uh, it's actually the third.